Imagine a classroom or a training environment if it had magical windows, magical walls. Windows that didn't just look out to one view, but could look out to multiple worlds. The real world, imagined worlds, past, present, future. Imagine that the walls of this classroom were full of information and knowledge and we could go and we could interact in a dynamic and exciting way with the walls. We could collaborate with others in order to build understanding and in order to get a better training experience. Well, the secret to building this type of environment is to use interactive whiteboards. Whether we're in person, remote or hybrid, interactive whiteboards are one of the most powerful technologies that we can use to create excitement, inspiration and understanding. Whether we're dealing with younger learners in a traditional classroom or adults in a corporate training environment, interactive whiteboards are a valuable addition to those environments and can be very, very powerful to get better results. In this video, I'm going to show you seven different ways to work with interactive whiteboards and I'll demonstrate using my NearHub S55. NearHub makes several different sizes of interactive whiteboards. There's the S55, which is great for huddle rooms and training environments. It works really well in the studio here. I have, they make the S65, a little bit of a bigger model. That's greater for a bigger space. And then the S75 is really good for classroom environments. They also make a graphics tablet to work with digital whiteboard software, but you shouldn't confuse digital whiteboard software with interactive whiteboards. You'll see that when you watch the video. I'll show you seven different ways that interactive whiteboards are really have an unparalleled experience when it comes to training and teaching. Now I'm going to go through all seven different ways that I use an interactive whiteboard. I actually use it even more than seven ways, but I'll show you seven ways and stick around because the seventh one is kind of a really fun thing to do. It merges some other technologies. So the first way that I can do things is by using it as an interactive environment. So I can use this whiteboard in order to have students come up to the whiteboard. It has 20 touch points, so you can have 20 people writing all at the same time on here. You can also share it out if you have remote students or if you have students that maybe are a little more shy and they don't want to come up to the board, but they want to be able to participate. They can use their phone or a tablet or their computer, connect up to the whiteboard and we can all participate in one learning session. So that's really useful. Uh, it really is good when we have remote users because I'm able to share this out remotely. This can become my whiteboard that I share out in a hybrid environment and it's a very powerful tool. Now the second way that I can use an interactive whiteboard is to bring in different types of content. So I can bring in interactive content, up to date content. I can bring in videos. I can bring in educational websites, images, all sorts of things to supplement my training. That real-time information really enriches the learning environment and makes for better learning. The S55 and oh, all of the NearHub whiteboards actually are running on a Android type of operating system. It's a customized version of Android, but it does mean that I can go to the Google Play Store and I can actually download apps. So I can bring in educational apps and all sorts of different tools that allow me to have that real-world content brought into my training environment. The third way that I can use an interactive whiteboard is for collaborative opportunities. I can actually have not just an instructor at the board going through information, but I can actually have through sharing other people, students and participants come in and work on the whiteboard. I can even invite guests into my classroom through the internet connection. So we can work together on solving problems. We can do things like uh, build communication and interpersonal skills, critical thinking, and a sense of community around shared learning objectives. I can also use templates here on the whiteboard in order to have a starting point and then do things like brainstorming and really foster a lot of creative and critical thinking. The fourth way that we can use an interactive whiteboard is for gamification, to bring some excitement into the learning process. You can use different tools to play games, like educational games. You're providing assessment, but it's wrapped up as a fun activity. You can have spinning wheels, you can have Jeopardy games, all sorts of things to quiz your students, but to make them have fun doing it. It reinforces the content of the course and it allows us to have just a little bit more excitement in the environment, which fosters a 
love of learning. It fosters an excitement and it makes the, the, the audience want to participate in the learning. The fifth way that we can use an interactive whiteboard is for annotation and highlighting important content in a dynamic way. So if I'm running a video on the whiteboard, I can stop that video. I can pause an app. I can then make annotations uh, on that so I can draw attention to specific concepts or important information that's on the video or on the diagram that I've brought onto the screen. This is a great way to really not just use my own content, but to bring other content in and extend the knowledge based upon that content. The sixth way that we can use an interactive whiteboard is to take the instructor out of the equation. We can use the whiteboard or students could use the whiteboard or learners could use the whiteboard to collaborate as a group. So that's going to allow people to use the whiteboard, collaborate as a group, use it for a Teams meeting, use it for a Zoom meeting, and you'll have the built-in camera, you'll have the sound bar on here, and that's going to make it into a real multimedia tool that people can use. There are many, many apps that people can use, and the nice thing is it also has the ability to import and export the content as you create it. So if you have a group that does brainstorming on some subject or if they're doing some project management, then once they're done, they can actually email the whiteboard as a PDF to themselves and then continue the conversation beyond just the interactive collaboration that they had at the time. The seventh way that I can use an interactive whiteboard is to combine it with other technologies such as a virtual headset. This allows me to share what I'm seeing in my virtual world with an audience because they're going to be able to look around as I look around and see what I'm seeing. This is great if I want to explain things that are in a virtual world or prepare people for the virtual world. So there's a lot of new ways that we can use interactive whiteboards in conjunction with other technologies to enhance both. In some ways, I've only begun to touch on all the things you can do with an interactive whiteboard like the S55, and I'm sure that I'm going to be making more videos on different specific features, like using it for online meetings and so on. If the video was helpful, hit the like button. Let me know that it was helpful in the comments. And if you want to subscribe to get more content on how we can use technology to learn and teach better, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. So whether you're using a huddle room board, whether you're using a board for the classroom, all of these can be great ways to enhance the way that we teach and create understanding. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.